I think the most important thing for us is to know about this inflation mechanism, this uh, mechanism of, of looting uh, by the establishment. What is the solution? Well, uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem that uh, the establishment wants to listen to us. They, they won't bring about the reforms. So you have to take matters into your own hand. And by that, I don't mean violence uh, of any means, of course. Uh, I mean, on a financial uh, basis, uh, you need to uh, hold uh, money that is sound, money that is real. Thursday, August 8th, 2024, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So things are evolving pretty much how I've been telling my viewers for years, uh, like they would. And uh, one of the, the big instruments uh, from the establishment and the elites to loot the general public, uh, stealth, it's a stealth tax that very few people understand. Uh, yeah, and, and they've done it through inflation. And, and we're going to look at inflation, what inflation of the currency really means. But uh, recently we had some looting uh, taking place here in the UK uh, during the protests. And uh, yes, rightfully so, people were critical uh, uh, of the protesters that looted. It's wrong. It's theft. Uh, but uh, what we'll do today is look at uh, the elites or the establishment's favorite way to extract wealth from the general public. And it's one of the reasons people are getting angry. And of course, the establishment is very much aware of this. And they, they were probably very much aware that it would take place back in 08 when they had to inflate the currency. Uh, they probably knew that uh, in 10, 15 years' time, the economy would be uh, totally uh, annihilated and people would be angry. So what I'm trying to say here is that they want to take the attention away from them. So w what have they done? Well, they've created divisions uh, amongst uh not just uh, different uh, groups in society in the UK, but also amongst them, uh, like age demographics. It, it's all a, a big mess. And what we need to do, though, is understand that uh, our biggest enemies really are not ourselves, because in the end of the day, all we want is uh, to be left alone to be able to earn a living, create some value, look after our kids, grandchildren. But uh, there are people at the top, of course, who don't think like that. The establishment, the elite, they've been in power for thousands of years and they've used the same strategies. So what I've decided to do today is to uh, expose this uh, massive instrument of looting uh, by the establishment. A and it's been happening since Roman times. But be, before we do, we need to understand what money is because they don't want us to know what real money is and I'm gonna, or inflation for that matter because if you don't understand money, you don't understand inflation. And, and some of these elites and establishment, they come out and say it in plain sight what inflation is like uh, Felix Sommery, the, the Raven of Zurich, did in the early, early 20th century. And uh, I'm quoting him now. And he said, The state alone is responsible for inflation. Inflation without government or indeed against government is impossible. So I saw yesterday that uh, the candidate for president for the Democratic Party uh, someone called Kamala Harris. She she said the following, and I'm going to play this um, clip here. And what she's doing here is she uh, doesn't know anything about inflation, and she's blaming uh, the, the wrong people. So let's listen to it. Because while our economy is doing well, 
by many measures, prices for everyday things like groceries are still too high. You know it and I know it. You know, when I was attorney general, I went after price fixing schemes. And when I am president, it will be a day one priority to fight to bring down prices. I will take on big corporations that engage in illegal price gouging. I will take on corporate landlords that unfairly raise rents on working families. I will take on big pharma and cap the cost of prescription drugs for all Americans. And continue to bring manufacturing jobs back to America. So we'll stop there. Um, no mention of the uh, central bank, uh, the Federal Reserve. Uh, that institution has been given uh, the monopoly power to create currency or reserves out of thin air. Can you imagine if we all could create reserves or currency out of thin air? We wouldn't have to worry about anything. The only problem is that uh, creating something out of thin air, people soon realize that it's worthless. And that's, that's the whole, the whole uh, gist of inflation. That's what it is. Inflation is not uh, a measure of prices. Uh, prices go up as a, as a consequence of inflation. But notice how this uh, person here who's running for president never mentioned the Federal Reserve, never mentioned the fact that uh, the United States Congress and the U.S. Treasury are spending and borrowing uh, like crazy. No, because and that's the, the whole reason behind uh, the economic woes that we have. But notice how she's blaming the corporations. She's blaming uh, pharmaceutical companies. And not that I love corporations or pharmaceuticals, because I, I think they've also been part of this scam because... Uh, they've bought uh, Congress, of course, but uh, it's not going to solve the problem of inflation. So what I want to do quickly here uh, right now is talk about the regression theorem uh, analysis of, of money. And I'll come to that in a minute, what it means. And, and I'm also going to recommend this book for you, uh, What Has Government Done to Our Money? The case for a hundred percent gold dollar, and uh, you can read this book anywhere. It's not just for the U.S. It applies to every country on the planet, especially the U.K. So, regression theorem. The regression theorem. What is that? It sounds complicated, uh, but it isn't. Bear with me. Uh, it says first proposed by Ludwig von Mises in his 1912 book. The theory of money and credit states that the value of money can be traced back, regressed to its value as a commodity. So what does that mean? Well, this book will explain everything and you can uh, load a free PDF online or you can buy it. I recommend the uh, Mises.org Institute uh, website. They sell it there if you want to buy the physical book. Uh, so... Very simple. If we go back to, uh, let's say, many thousands of years ago, uh, when society was being formed, people didn't use money. What did they use? What, what did people uh, do in terms of exchanging things? Well, they bartered. It's very simple. And uh, w what's the secret to bartering? Well, you have to have something, uh, a value that someone else wants, and that other person needs to have something of value or a service, can be a service as well, that you want. So you can barter it. It's value for value. And then through trial and error, through through. Uh, the ages, people uh, realized that there were some things that people desired more and that most people desired all the time. And uh, those uh, commodities, uh, they became uh, more uh, the most marketable commodity. Uh, they kind of facilitated uh, exchange because you didn't have to find someone that uh, 
had something specifically that you needed and that that person wanted what you could provide. Uh, this commodity was kind of a facilitator uh, of, of exchanges and eventually uh, it became what people call these days a currency or money. And there are a lot of qualities that uh, this most marketable commodity has to have, of course. And uh, one of them is that it's, uh, it needs to be valued by people or else they wouldn't want it. It, it needs to be uh, easily uh, carried around. It needs to hold its uh, value over time. It needs to be divisible. And over, over the years, over the millennia, there's been uh, all kinds of uh, goods and commodities that ha has been used as money. But in the last two and a half thousand years, it's been uh, gold and silver. And uh, it's been other things, of course. Uh, in the aftermath of World War II, for example, in Germany, people were using cigarettes as money. Their currency had collapsed, of course. So it can be anything. It could be Bitcoin. If people really uh, think Bitcoin uh, is going to be the most marketable commodity, they could use it as money. That's how it was created. That's how Satoshi Nakamoto wanted to see it, even though now we're told it's just as a store of value. And even gold uh, is uh, very valuable, of course, but it can be used as a currency for, for the purchase of higher value goods. So there are some who say that uh, gold and silver as money were used uh, by empires to pay their uh, soldiers, and that's true. <laughs> but it wasn't uh, politicians or emperors that created gold and silver. It wasn't them who said, oh, these are good, let's pay them with that. No, it's because of custom, because they knew that everyone found gold and silver valuable. But uh, what happened, uh, and now we skip to the inflation part. So uh, in the Roman uh, era, they had their silver coins called the denarius. And uh, that's what they used to pay uh, the soldiers with. But uh, towards the, uh, let's say the end of the third century uh, AD, they started inflating uh, the currency. And what does that mean? Well, they started inflating the supply of the currency uh, by debasing the currency. And that's uh, what, what's debasing the currency. Well, let's say the denarius uh, had five grams of silver in it. They, 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 well, they would uh, take a gram out and then put some base metal in it. It still looked like silver, it, but uh, that would make it uh, so the, the currency supply increased by 20% without them adding any silver. But people, of course, twig onto it. People are not stupid. <laughs> Maybe not right away, but people realize, well, this is not worth a, a real denarius, so we're gonna charge 20% more if you uh, tender this for payment. And it continued the inflation of the currency. And uh, they took two and a half grams or half, half of the silver out. Well, that doubled the money supply, that doubled prices. And, and by, the, uh, well, by the fifth century, when the Western Roman Empire collapsed, there was no silver anymore in the denarius. Uh, and that's why it's, it collapses well, because uh, the uh, establishment and elites uh, in Rome, they uh, basically looted the whole uh, public and they couldn't pay any more for, uh, for the soldiers to keep the borders of the Western Roman Empire. And that's what they've been doing in the West. And especially since the late 1960s and early 70s. And why is that? Well, because uh, first of all, in, in the 1960s, all the silver coinage was retired in the West. Uh, we stopped using silver coinage and they gave us copper nickel uh, coinage, which uh, base metal uh, uh, worth a lot less than silver. 
And, and the other thing they did uh, with, with gold was that Richard Nixon, uh, he uh, detached uh, the U.S. dollar, the currency from gold on August 15th, 1971. Uh, and what that did is that it's allowed uh, politicians and the central bankers to uh, print these, uh, uh, which used to be promissory notes for gold and silver coinage. But uh, as I said, uh, they, they can print, print these out of thin air, no gold backing or anything. And is, is it any wonder that the, the price of gold and silver have gone up in, in multiples since the 1970s? And uh, I think they're going to continue to do so because we, we went from a commodity-based uh, monetary system up until the early 70s in, into a debt-based fiat currency system uh, where uh, the national debt is the backing for all the currencies and, and the central banks and, and the treasuries. Uh, they will uh, create these at, ad infinitum, out of thin air, <laughs> and that's why I'm holding a 50 pound note, which in the UK, if you pay with that, people get really stressed because they think it's a lot of money, but it isn't. Uh, it, the 50 pound note today is what the 10 pound note probably was 25 years ago. It's worth a lot less. Why, why are we not taught this in school? Well, well, because the elites and the establishment, they control uh, the curriculum. Uh, in education, be it in private schools or, or government schools. So you will never uh, hear uh, this kind of uh, lesson about money. And uh, what we're told uh, about inflation is that it's CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index, which is a, a measure of prices that is compiled by the state or the government and you can make <laughs> you, you can be sure that uh, it doesn't tell you the truth about prices. But the other uh, real, uh, let's say, deception about CPI is that um, they've equated it to inflation. Um, so we're seeing now uh, after CPI getting into double digits in the UK, uh, what, what do they do? Well, in 2022, they uh, changed the way they calculate the CPI to make it look a, a lot lower. And, and they're also saying now that inflation has come down because it, went, it came down from 12% down to 2 But that's not inflation. They're still inflating the money supply. And um, it's a very... Uh, nefarious tax because very few people understand it and I would say uh, it's also wrong and immoral and, and complete theft just like uh, the, the protesters uh, did the other day looting a, a Sainsbury shop in Manchester it's the same thing but it's on a industrial professional scale I'll give you an analogy <laughs> you know probably that I am into golf so the government, uh, this is how good they are at inflation and looting. Uh, think of Jack Nicholas and uh, Tiger Woods, arguably <laughs> the best players, uh, golf players ever. Well, that's the government in terms of looting. What about the, the looters in Manchester or wherever else? Well, they're, they're rank amateurs. They're just starting to play golf, and they have a 40 handicap. They can't even... Well, they'll shoot 120 for 18 holes. So um, that's the whole problem, and, and that's why you're going to see them ratchet up the divide and conquer. And unfortunately, the divide and conquer is not just domestically, but it's also internationally, geopolitically. Um And uh, I think the most important thing for us is to know about this inflation mechanism, this uh, mechanism of, of looting uh, by the establishment. What is the solution? 
well, uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem that uh, the establishment wants to listen to us. They, they won't bring about the reforms. So you have to take matters into your own hand. And by that, I don't mean violence uh, of any means, of course. Uh, I mean, on a financial uh, basis, uh, you need to uh, hold uh, money that is sound, money that is real uh, for a rainy day. And of course, it's very hard in the current system of inflation to be able to, to save any of their funny fiat currency in order to exchange that for gold and silver or even uh, to pay off your debts to make sure that you're self-sufficient and reliant. With that, <laughs> let's uh, quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's just gone past 8.20 a.m. London time. I don't think uh, the stock market is out of the woods. We had uh, big falls Friday and Monday. Market recovered on Tuesday and yesterday. It went back down slightly. But looking at the charts, things don't look good, uh, in my opinion. Um, look at this chart of the... Uh, NASDAQ 100 here still looks like it's going down. Daily chart. Look at the uh, Nikkei. Same thing. And the other thing I've been talking about is the dollar yen. Um, this chart of the dollar yen makes me believe that the, there's still a lot of room on the downside for the dollar, which is really negative for everything because, because of the carry trade, which I've spoken about many times. If you want to learn more about it, uh, check my uh, playlist about the carry trade. I've been speaking about, about it for years, how it would create havoc once it reversed uh, because it's a provider of liquidity. So uh, the stronger the yen is, uh, the more disruptive it is for things. And this uh, chart of the dollar yen is, uh, is still looking uh, very negative for the dollar. It's like a, a bear flag. Gold is up 13 bucks at 23.96. It's been as high as 2400 and as low as 23.80. And silver is actually rebounding this morning. It's up 20 points, 26.79. It has been as high as 26.98. Uh, the uh, yield curve in the US, the US Treasury yield curve, the difference uh, in yield between the two year note and the 10 year note. Uh, that's almost disinverting for the first time in many, many months. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, it usually signals that we're going to have a, a recession ahead. Um, so how does that work? Well, when the curve inverts, when it costs more to borrow for two years than 10 years, which is very unusual, you uh, it, it's a precursor to a recession. But the signal that there will be a recession is only when it disinverts. And we are almost there right now. Uh, just give you an idea. Uh, the two-year no yield is at 395 and the 10 years at 390. Still inverted, but only five basis points. Uh, a few months ago, it was more than 30 or 40. So there you go. Yeah. With that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.